Okay, good morning everyone and welcome to this Wolsey Hall Oxford homeschooling information webinar. And um, we've got jo families joining us from all around the world today. So a very big welcome to everyone that's um, joined us this morning or afternoon or evening, depending on your time zone that you're in. I'm Lynn Stacey, Marketing Manager here at Wolsey Hall Oxford. And I just want to let you know before we start that we will actually be recording this event. Um, so we will send out links to the recording a few days after the event. So please check your inboxes for that and you can share it with your friends and family or, or whatever once you've received that. So the format for today will be a presentation followed by a question and answer section. You'll find the question and answer um, section at the bottom of your screens. Um, however, we would recommend that you don't start putting questions into this until after the presentation is over, because many of the questions that you may have will be answered in the presentation. Um, please note that we won't be answering any questions that are specific to an individual child today. Um, if you've got these kinds of questions, then please put in an inquiry form and our admissions team will be very happy to answer any questions that you have um, and to talk to you on Skype or Zoom or uh, Teams, etc. So I'm joined here today by a number of colleagues who will be given the presentation and answering questions in the question and answer area and live in the discussions that we're having. Um, I've got Ruth Young, Head of Secondary, uh, Christine Armstrong, Head of Primary, who's just joined us, thank you Christine, um, and we've also got a number of colleagues um, from our tutors, supervisors of courses, admissions team, marketing, um, waiting in the um, Q&A area to answer any questions that you have after the presentation. So without further ado, I would like to hand over to Christine and Ruth, who will give a presentation on Wolsey Hall Oxford. Thank you very much. Thanks, Lynn. Um, hello to everyone joining us all around the world today. It's great to see so many of you here for the Wolsey Hall Open event. Um, we're going to talk to you just a little bit, first of all, about Wolsey Hall. Um, firstly, we are very proud to be an accredited Cambridge school. Now, Cambridge is a globally recognised education entity who not only offer a, a variety of curricula from primary all the way through to A-level, but are also a recognised examination board. It's a name some of you may have heard around the globe. Um, there's over 10,000 Cambridge schools, and we're very pleased to be part of the Cambridge family, um, as it means that we're able to offer accredited externally examined courses that lead to globally recognised qualifications. So just to start it off, I, I'd like to tell you a little bit about Wolsey Hall for, for those of you who may not know uh, much about us. Uh, so we have been around for a long time. Um, it was originally founded in 1894. Um, and back then, obviously, it wasn't an online service that was being provided, um, but it was using the old postal service and it was handwritten notes that were being um, shared with people um, in the UK. Uh, we've come a long way since then, um, and we're really proud of the service and the offer that we that we have today. Um, and part of that offer is our courses, which are not just primary, but also secondary. And we cater for children who are typically in the age range of four years old through to 18 years old. And we also have a number of mature students studying with us as well at Woolsey Hall. Uh, sometimes we have an entire family in that the children might be studying with us. Um, and also as well, the parents are also taking courses with us at Woolsey Hall too. Um, so as Ruth mentioned, we are a registered school uh, with Cambridge uh, International and in primary in particular, we're very proud of the fact that we are um, the first and only online primary school with Cambridge um, at the moment. Uh, we do have students across the globe, so we very much cater for audiences around the world with um, our study courses, and we do have some fantastic students that have come through our door over the year, uh, over the years, including uh, Nelson Mandela, who we are very proud uh, to be able to say was a student with Wolsey Hall a number of years ago. So I'm just going to pass you back to Ruth to talk a little bit about why you might choose us um, for study. So. At Wolsey Hall, we are a homeschooling college and we feel that something that sets us apart and offers a unique experience to our families is the partnership that we have between ourselves, 
the, the parents, so the, the, the adults who are working with the, the children on their courses and the children themselves. We have a system in place where each family has a student progress manager and also tutors who are the academic support for each of their courses. And we're going to talk a little bit more in detail about that later on in the presentation. But rest assured, if you choose to join Wolsey Hall, you will be well supported on every step of your journey due to this strong partnership. We do recognise that every child is different. Every child makes different progress and each child may find certain subjects straightforward or other subjects more challenging. And to that end, we do not have a specific entry point based on a child's age. We look at the child's previous learning, we look at their ability and we offer ready tests for our courses as well as placement flexibility. So that means that a child can study different courses at different levels with Wolsey Hall, depending at what point they are at in their education per subject. So unlike a mainstream Brooks and Mortar school where a child would join and for example, start in year seven and they would be studying year seven level for all of their subjects at Wolsey Hall, it may well be that your child is particularly talented or maybe bilingual and therefore can study a language at a higher level than year seven. And that with Wolsey Hall is possible. We provide certificates of achievement and completion of course reports to all of our families at the end of every course that we offer. This allows you as the family to see the progress that your child has made, to be assured that you have the correct documentation that is required to show the homeschooling that you have been studying. Also, um, at certain levels, the reports will include details of next steps in terms of advice from us as to where you, your child can progress next. As I mentioned before, we, we have this great support network for our families with our tutors and student progress managers, as well as other people within the organisation. Um, we have our academic courses, our subject courses, which Christine and I are going to speak to you about in more detail momentarily. But as well as the academics at Wolsey Hall, we, we aim to support the holistic development of every single child. And therefore, we have community websites for both primary and secondary learners, where students can engage with other homeschooled Wolsey Hall students around the world, share their experiences in different club uh, in diff different clubs which have monthly themes. We also run lots of competitions every month for students to take part in. Um, some of them have been, where, where in the world are you? And it's a competition to see who can submit the best photo to see where they are in the world, really celebrating the global nature of our students. We also have a virtual library um, for students to access, meaning that they can really develop their passion for reading and also an area where student news can be shared. So <clears throat> what I'd like to do now is just take you through the different phases of Wolsey Hall, just to um, help those that may not be as familiar with the UK system. Um, so you can see approximately where your child um, may, may sit um, in this journey. So at the beginning of the learning journey, we have our lower primary phase and the lower primary phase is years one and years two, which is typically children who are ar around five to seven years old in the UK. And we also have a getting ready for year one um, series of courses in maths and English. And this is typically for children who have not hit five years old quite yet, um, or they may want some additional foundation skills put in place before they enter year one. We then move on to upper primary, um, and upper primary is years three, four, five and six in the UK system, and this is typically for children around seven to 11 years old. And then we move on to secondary. So we have lower secondary phase, which is years seven, eight and nine. Uh, this is typically children who are 11 to 14 years old. And then we move on to our examination programmes. So years 10 and years 11 is a two year programme, and that is working towards um, a programme of study to attain GCSE or IGCSEs. Um, through an external examination with Cambridge or other 
um, examination boards here in the UK. We then move on to A level and A level again is a two year program and this is years 12 and 13 and again it leads to external examinations which are recognized globally um, by universities and employers as a sign of quality in learning. So GCSE and IGCSE years 10 and 11 that is typically children who are 14 to 16 years of age, moving on to A level, tends to be 16 to 18 years old. Um, but as Ruth has already mentioned, we do have flexibility in placement. Um, and you may not be following the traditional pathway of age related year groups, depending on your specific situation um, with your, your children. Um, so that is something that you are able to discuss with us um, at the inquiry stage, and we can help guide you to the right levels for your particular circumstance. And we have a range uh, within that, some very specifically want age related um, courses and some would like to explore the possibility of having some flexibility with that. So in terms of our curriculum, we thought it would be nice just to show you a video so that one of our students can give you a flavour of what it's like to be homeschooling uh, with Woolsey Hall. So we'd like to introduce you to Abdullah and Abdullah is going to share just a little bit about what his day looks like in primary homeschooling. I'm from Singapore. I study in Wolsey Hall, Oxford, doing year three and four. We live near the sea, and this makes us enjoy the nature along with my studies. A typical day for me would be studying, playing, swimming, and spending lots of time with my family. I study maths and English from year four, and geography, science, and computing from year three. The day begins with printing out the lesson plans for the day, and after my mom explains them, I do the exercises on my own. Along with the exercises, I also sit with the computer to do activities online provided by Mosey Hall Oxford. The online activities are interactive and it helps me to do the subjects like a game and it's very interesting to me. Along with my regular studies, I get crafting activities from science and geography which gives me peace of mind and I take great interest in doing those. My favorite game indoors is to play with building blocks. I love to color when I'm sitting idle. My mom picks out coloring pages and I love to spend my time coloring. After studying one or two subjects, I go out to the playground with my brothers. Homeschooling has been an amazing experience as I finish my studies in time and get plenty of time to do self-development and build a memorable childhood. Okay, so that was just um, a little a little flavour of Abdullah's day and what it's like for him homeschooling with Woolsey Hall. Um, and as you can see, there, there's a lovely mixture of online activities, offline activities, some practical hands on, um, some textbook related. So he really does have a variety of learning taking place um, and it, it's all it's all tailored for him um, and his experience so that actually when he is learning um, he really is focused on that learning um, and he doesn't have lots of his day wasted um, unnecessarily uh, when he is focused on his learning and that gives him plenty of opportunities to do other things that he loves then like playing with his brothers um, and going to the playground um, his coloring passion that he has um playing with lego um so he's got he's got a really lovely balance at home of learning and enjoying a wider experience of learning as well so i'd just like to talk you through the range of subjects that we offer at 
primary. So if you have children who are sitting in that age range of kind of three and a half years old um, through to 11 years old and maybe a little bit older, depending on their need, then we have a range of courses for you to choose from. So for our pre year one children, for our very youngest ch children, we have a getting ready for year one maths course and a getting ready for year one English course. And this is a full year course. So this is like being part of um, a nursery or a kindergarten um, an early years um, environment. Um, and it's a one year course in maths and a one year course in English to prepare you for schooling. In lower primary, I won't go through all the subjects that is there, but you can see we focus on the core subjects of English, maths and science, um, as well as then enhancing subjects and creative subjects like art and music, uh, French as well. And when we get into upper primary, then we have a few more options for you. Um, I would just point out in lower primary, for those that may not be aware, then humanities um, in UK schools uh, refers to geography and history combined. So our humanities course in lower primary is a combination of history and geography, uh, and it very much has an international flavour to it. When you then move into upper primary, they're separated out so that you can learn uh, more in depth in those subjects. And we have history and international history. So if you're looking for a global perspective, you can choose international history. Um, and our history course is more in line with UK curriculum topic. So if you're based in the UK or you have a real interest in the UK in terms of uh, its history, um, then you may choose to do history rather than international history. Um, and our geography has an international flavour as well. So there are plenty of subjects to choose from. We always recommend that you take at least the core subjects in primary of English and maths. Um, as a starting point, um, but we would obviously recommend any of these courses to you because we think they are all absolutely wonderful. So we're going to now meet one of our secondary students who's going to talk to you through what it is like studying at Wolsey Hall when you're completing um, a course which is externally examined. And she's going to explain to us how she organises her study day and give you a little flavour of what it is like. I'm Steph, a student that does IGCSEs at Walsey Hall, and I'm here to show you my steps to preparing and completing an assignment. Step 1. Canvas. This is the app or website where you're going to get all the information and material you need to learn for your subjects. It is your ultimate learning source. On Canvas, you can do your modules and quizzes, turn your assignments in, receive your assignment marks, and message your tutors for any help. Canvas will be your best friend. Step 2. Modules. Every subject contains more or less nine modules. Every module consists of topics where it gives you tasks you need to complete. Most module work will require you to read some pages, do various questions, and jot down some notes. For my first topic in Economics Module 5, I'll need to work through pages 124 to 125 in my course book. Then I'll need to write out some key points. And then I'm going to have to check out this website they have linked. I actually like to note down any new definitions that I've just learned into my notebook. And I also write down any extra information that I need to remember. Step three, quizzes. At the end of each module, there is a quiz that awaits to be completed. This quiz is there to test your knowledge from what you've just learned. These quizzes are usually multiple choice, which makes it quite easy and super fun. It is definitely a great way to revise for your upcoming assignment as you can retake them as many times as you want. Step 4. Revision and Preparation Before doing the assignments, it is important to revise and review everything you have just learned one last time. You can even do the quiz once more to make sure that you are fully prepared to do the assignment. Right before I start my assignment, I like to organize my desk space. I put out my assignment, my notebook, and a pen. And if I need to use my computer, I put that out as well. Step 5. 
assignments. Now it's time to start. Every assignment has an instruction page where it will instruct you to either complete it under exam conditions or if it is an open book assignment. It will also show the recommended time limit. However, you don't need to follow this as it is just an assignment. On my economics assignment 5 instructions, it says that I need to write online paper using a black pen. It also further says to upload your work on Canvas. However, it doesn't say anything about working in exam conditions, so this is an open book assignment. After I finished my assignment, I scan it on an app called Cam Scanner and then send it directly on Canvas. Step 6. Marks and feedback. Usually, marks and feedback from your tutor will be given back to you within a week. The feedback you get from your tutor is very helpful as it tells you what you've done correctly and what you must improve on. With the feedback, you also get the specimen answers sheet, which gives all the answers to the assignment. And to make the most of my feedback, I do the questions that I've gotten wrong once more. This is just to make sure that I've understood the module and won't do the same mistake twice. So I hope that gives you a little flavour of when a secondary student is working towards completing an assignment, how the online resources and offline resources that Wolsey Hall offer support that progress. Um, we're going to talk a little bit more later about how the courses are structured. But first of all, just to speak about the subjects that we offer at secondary. Um, if, I did, if we talk first about the lower secondary phase, so this is the point where a child has completed their primary studies and join the, the youngest phase of the secondary school, so typically aged 11 to 14. Here, this is an absolutely fantastic opportunity for students to study a breadth of subjects, to explore, to delve into different subjects and, and think about the areas that they are passionate about and that they enjoy studying. It's, it is the first basis for developing the skills and the knowledge that they will need when they move on to study at IGCSE and A-level. Um, our admissions team are happy to advise in terms of subject combinations um, and also the number of subjects to be studied at lower secondary. Similarly to primary, we would always advise that a child is studying as a minimum the core subjects, English, maths and science, and potentially the fourth core, which is becoming more and more popular computing. Um, and then that they balance that, that core curriculum with humanities, foreign languages, or one of our more um, creative subjects such as art and music. We do also offer a course called Skills for Life, which is um, a course designed around personal, social and health education, um, and it's designed to be relevant for homeschooling students across the globe. Once a child has completed their lower secondary studies, they would follow on into the IGCSE phase of the school. IGCSE courses are designed to prepare students for their external examinations, typically at the end of two years. It's the first point where children start to specialise a little bit more. So again, they would normally follow and pick the core subjects of English, maths and science to study through to IGCSE level and then add in additional subjects to broaden their curriculum. On average, students would study around eight subjects in a mainstream school. At Wolsey Hall, we offer flexibility with the number of subjects to be studied, whilst taking into account a student's future aspirations in terms of the courses that they might want to study at A-level or for following on to university. If you know that your child is at this point in their education journey where they're starting to look at IGCSE choices, we are really well placed to help you and advise you and look ahead and give you careers advice as well as choosing your IGCSE options. After the IGCSE examination results have been released, a student is then ready to move on to A-level. This is where they refine their number of subjects studied even more. Students would typically study between three to four A-level subjects. The courses are two years in duration for a full A-level. AS is the name that is given to the first year of an A-level. Um, and again, we offer a range of subjects here. You can see on the table that we offer both UK and international science qualifications at A-level. And if that is of interest to you, please do contact our admissions team who will be able to advise you as to the difference between those qualifications and also what is best for you based on your location in the world. Thanks, Sorry. I'm just going to continue talking a little bit about the external examinations now, as I, I said, they're talking about the IG and the A level. Our courses are designed to prepare students for those external examinations. The assignment that you saw Steph completing in that video, 
are is an IGCSE assignment and all of our assignments are designed to be formative and developmental and scaffold students who are studying their IGCSEs or A-levels to success in their external exams by using wording that is very similar to past paper questions to make sure they feel confident in the application of the knowledge that they have learned during their courses. We also have at Wolsey Hall examination officers who can support our homeschooling families with finding a local examination centre through to actually giving advice on the entry codes for the exams that your child will need to sit. All Wolsey Hall students take their external examinations as private candidates, but we are here to help you with that process and make sure that you have got a viable option for you in your area. The examinations that we offer are predominantly Cambridge, Cambridge International Examinations, but we do have a number of qualifications that we offer through Pearson edXL. This is another exam board, which some of you may be familiar with. Both of them are globally recognized and they can be used as part of the university application or in terms of seeking employment, employers also recognize these on a global level. So how our courses work. So um, I hope that the videos that you saw gave you um, a, a good flavour of how, how the courses work. Um, but this is just a little bit more information on that and just to reiterate a few things. So our primary and lower secondary courses take, take between seven to ten months on average to complete and this is this reflects a year of learning in a physical school um, and it factors in the idea that people take holidays and they have breaks within an academic year our igcse and a level courses take approximately 18 months to two years to complete if you were in a physical school, it would be two years. Um, but we recognise that if you're homeschooling, you may not be taking quite as much holiday um, as physical schools um, uh, that give you when you are, sorry, start that again. So IGCSE and A-level courses, the 18 months is recognising that you may not take all the holiday that a physical school um, has for people that are within that physical setting when they shut the doors to everybody. Um, so students can start a course at any time of the year and I think that's really important um, because that is very different to a physical school setting um, and lots of online schools. So you can start with us at any time um, so there is no month there is no date within a month that it is impossible for us to have as a start date for you um, and you choose the number of subjects to be studied so as Ruth already mentioned there are times when uh, we will advise um, and we will help you in terms of the number of subjects that would be beneficial depending on where you are in the learning journey um, and what else you are doing um, in the learning environment outside of Wolsey Hall. Um, but we have students who are doing two or three courses with us through to those that might be doing eight or nine courses with us um, in terms of subjects. So we do have that flexibility. Um, there are no online lessons at Wolsey Hall, um, and that is important to note. So we work on the basis that we want ultimate flexibility for our families and we want you to be in control of the learning at home. So we don't have timetables for you to join set online lessons with a tutor. Instead, we have online courses on Canvas, our learning platform, and then learning is a combination of online and offline studies uh, with the opportunity for practical activities too. So you are in control of how and when the studies are taking place at home. So to speak a little bit now about what our courses include and how they're set up, and I think the videos sum this up quite nicely in terms of seeing Abdullah, the primary school, he mentioned that his mum explained the lesson to him. That would align with what we're talking about here, the fact that in primary school, our courses are parent led for our homeschooling families. So lesson plans are provided for the parents to support their child at home, to engage in their learning with them and to inspire them to go deeper into their learning and 
all of our courses starting in primary as well are designed to develop curiosity and interest in the subject area and as the student as the child gets older to also develop more independence and autonomy and this then leads into the secondary school courses which are by this point student led with some parental support obviously there's quite a bit of difference between a student in year 7 who might be 11 years old and a student studying a levels at age 17 in terms of the level of parental support that a child may may require because by the time they're studying a levels they are very autonomous they are well equipped to deal with the challenges that the course will will throw at them in terms of finding out being keen to research and work out the right answer. An 11, 11 year old may need require a little bit more support and encouragement, which is why we say some parental support. But overall, the overarching aims as well as students that are well equipped for dealing with the challenges of the rest of their educational journey. We want them to develop the skills that are going to be essential for them as they move on to university studies and in the workplace, that they are able to solve problems independently, knowing where to go for help as required. So we have a very strong support structure um, within Wolsey Hall, as well as well thought out lessons for parents and students to follow. Our courses also include course books. These are specifically selected for the individual subject and they give the core knowledge and understanding and also is, is an excellent reference point for students studying their individual subjects. As you may have seen in Steph's video, um, she showed you Canvas and described it as best friend. It really would, will be for anyone joining Wolsey Hall. The courses on Canvas are divided into modules. And then at the end of each module, there's an assignment. You saw one example of an assignment, but assignments come in many different shapes or forms. The one that you saw in the video was a written assignment. We have assignments where students are submitting speaking work, especially in modern foreign languages and in English. And also there are other subjects where students will submit videos or presentations to demonstrate the learning that they have covered within, that, within the module that they have studied. Those assignments are key milestones in the courses for the for the child studying to demonstrate the learning that has taken place and to receive feedback from their tutors. Our courses also include, as well as access to the Canvas online system, there are videos in the courses, there are web links, there are quizzes, and much, much more to support the learning. The interactive activities that the courses can um, include will allow students to practice the skills, to practice the knowledge and gain immediate feedback as some of them will be self-marking. We also um, do make sure that we are including videos in our courses to help scaffold students learning all the way through a course as well. So whilst we have no online lessons, the courses have a wealth of knowledge and guidance in many, many different forms, not only in written, but in video form and in interactive activity form to help support a child's learning. Um. And just to say, there's also subscriptions. So many, many of the courses have subscriptions as well. Um, so I won't spend too long on this slide because I, I think uh, this is uh, this has come across a little bit already. Um, but there's two key points of contact for a family. Uh, one is called your Student Progress Manager, your SPM for short, um, and the the other key personnel is the tutors, of course. Um, so your Student Progress Manager is your single point of contact at Woolsey Hall. They will help you create a timetable to suit your home situation when you join Woolsey Hall. They will um, monitor all of the subjects that your child is taking and the progress that they're making across all of their subjects. They will check in regularly with you to see how things are going and how the family's getting on. Uh, they're available for questions or concerns that, that you have. And if you need to share information with all of the tutors, et cetera, then they are on hand to be that single point for you. So if you're going on holiday, you can let your SPM know, for example, and they will make sure that all of the tutors know that, that you are going to be taking a, a holiday um, and the dates that that will take place. So sitting slightly differently to that are the tutors. So our tutors are all experienced and well-qualified UK teachers. 
and they mark all of the assignments that um, are dotted throughout the course um, and the information and feedback that they will give at that point is really quite key for progress in learning. So they will give you the areas of strength from the learning that they have seen. And probably more importantly, they will provide some next steps in learning for the student so that you know how to progress in that particular subject and develop those skills further. They offer virtual meetings, so using Teams, Zoom um, at various points throughout the course so that they can check in with you and they can see how it's going. Um, and they are available online via Canvas, our learning platform, to answer any questions that you may have uh, or a learning point um, that you may need just some clarification on or you want to check about. So your tutors and your SPM um, are your key points of contact with Woolsey Hall um, and they are there to support you and to help both the child but also as well the family as well. We do offer a range of additional support also to our families that um, a number of our families choose to use. So we have a learning support service. This service is an excellent resource for families um, for whom their child may have experienced particular challenges with their education or may have um, specific needs that they would like advice and support on to access the homeschooling courses. This service is an advice service as well as offering individualized one-to-one -one sessions if a parent is, is wanting to, to go down that route as well. We also at Wolsey Hall make sure that we look after the well-being of our students um, because studying online can be a remote experience. So some of our students want to make sure that they can connect with others. As I spoke about earlier, we have the communities to allow students to engage. But for some students, they may need some additional support to make sure that they are in the right frame of mind for studies and therefore we have a well-being service which parents can use during their time with us. We also have a comprehensive university um, advice service that starts as early as parents want it to in terms of it can start offering advice from a very early point in when students enter perhaps secondary education all the way through to university and careers advice. Our university advisor um, has worked overseas for many years and in the UK as well, and therefore is well placed to support every single student at Wolsey Hall in terms of their aspirations. We also have a reference and transcript service to support our Wolsey Hall students who are going on to higher education um, or employment later on. Um, and just finally, before we move to Q&A, um, just to reiterate some of the, the points that we have already uh, mentioned. Um, so staying connected is really important and having that uh, sense that you belong to a learning community. So for students, we do have community websites, so one for secondary, one for primary, um, and it just has so much on there that makes it feel like it's a learning experience and, the, and that you're part of a learning community from forums to clubs, competitions, our virtual library. Um, they're all found within the community um, and they really are fantastic. Um, we also have an alumni as well. So for those that do move on from Woolsey Hall, um, they become alumni of Woolsey Hall um, and we keep contact with them to see how they are getting on once they have left us. And for parents as well, it's, it's nice to be able to be connected um, and to feel support. So we do have newsletters to keep you up to date and in touch with what's going on. We have invite only Facebook groups for parents, um, which are very active um, and people find them really, uh, really a useful way to connect with others. Um, and for those that do join us, if you're specifically looking for uh, maybe another family that's geographically in a in the same or similar location to yourself, then we do have a parent liaison that, that can help make that connection as well. So at this point, I'm going to hand back to Lynn for the final part of the session today. Okay, thanks very much, uh, Christine and Ruth. That was great. 
Uh, before we move on to the question and answer, I just wanted to um, remind everyone that we will be sending out a recording of the um, presentation and the Q&A section discussions after um, the event. I know some people have been asking about can they have the um, videos for their children to watch. Well, they will be embedded within the um, within the presentations, but I would also recommend that you go to our YouTube channel. Um, if you just search on Wolsey Hall Oxford, you'll find us very easily. And we've got lots and lots of student videos that you can show to your children. Uh, we have individual playlists for primary, secondary, IGCSE and A-level, which shows lots of different students and the way that they approach their studies and also lots of other information about that particular level that will help you as well. So please do go and have a look at that as well. So we're now going to move on to the Q&A section. So please feel free to start putting your questions into the Q&A. Um, you can type them at the bottom of your screens. We are going to try and get through as many questions as we possibly can today. We've got a big team of people uh, waiting to answer your questions. We also have a lot of attendees. So um, if there are questions that lots of people are asking, we'll probably only answer them once just to get through them all. So please keep looking back and forth to see, see the answers that other people are, are getting as well. Um, and also, we're going to introduce some of the questions that have been submitted into the Q&A for a, a more detailed answer within the live discussion. Um, so I'm going to start with that. Um, and one of the first questions that I've seen that's popped into the Q&A is um, one for Ruth, actually. If you could clarify the difference between coordinated sciences and combined sciences, and what does single and double award mean, please? Sure, not a problem at all. So um, we are talking now about IGCSE level. At IGCSE, we offer a number of science pathways. So I'll explain each of them. And then if I haven't been clear, please do please do pop another question into the Q&A if you would like any further detail. We offer a single award science qualification for biology, chemistry and physics. This means that for each of those sciences, you can study a course with us that leads to one GCSE. This GCSE pathway is ideal for students who are wanting to take a science or multiple science subjects at A level, because it goes into the most in-depth study of those individual sciences. So a child, we would always recommend you take two as a minimum out of the three, but a child who's wanting to go on to study medicine or engineering at university would be well placed to study the A-levels and the university degree if they study one of our single science GCSEs in either biology or chemistry or physics. We then move on to the slightly different IGCSE science qualifications. The first one that we offer from Cambridge <laughs> coordinated science qualification. Within this qualification, a student studies all three sciences again, biology, chemistry and physics. However, they lead to two IGCSEs at the end of their course of study and their external exams. That means when you compare it with the single science that I've just described, the coordinate, coordinated science means you're studying all three subjects in a slight amount less a slight amount of detail less than the single sciences. That didn't come out right, but less detail than the single sciences by a small amount. However, the coordinated science GCSE is still a gateway qualification to studying science at A-level. It will prepare a child well for future A-level studies. So you might ask, why would you choose one or the other? It really depends where your child's passion lies. If you have a, a child who does enjoy science, is achieving well, um, but also has a range of other subjects that they want to study at IGCSE, the coordinated might be a good choice for you because you still study all three sciences, you get two IGCSEs at the end of it, meaning you can go on to science A level, but they've been able to have a broader experience of other IGCSE subjects because they've freed up as such an additional IGCSE space. The combined science GCSE, is a science qualification where, again, they study all three sciences, but they le it leads to one IGCSE at the end of it. So this is an ideal qualification for students who require a science IGCSE level two qualification, but for whom studying at level is not a priority and not, not so a pathway that they are looking at following, because the combined science would not permit a level study because you study the sciences in less detail than the co coordinated and the single sciences. 
sorry, I know this has been a long answer, but I've only got one more thing to say then, I promise. Um, just for those UK-based parents, the names of combined and coordinated, please be aware, Cambridge coordinated is the two GCSE qualification, combined is the one. For UK examination boards that you may be familiar with, combined is the two GCSE qualification in the UK. So just to be clear, coordinated with Cambridge is two, combined is one. And there we go. I think I've given a lot of detail there, sorry. Thank you very much, Ruth, yes. Um, if a child is lower or higher than their age, are there assessments or does the parent decide? I think, I think there's two sort of primary and secondary sort of um, answers I think we can ask for for that one, please. Yeah, so if I start uh, from a primary point of view, um, so it, actually that's a, re that's a really good question. Um, so in terms of entry for primary, um, we have um, two approaches really. So one is a checklist um, or a pre-entry test. So we've got a couple of subjects where there is a pre-entry uh, little light test that you can take to help you know where your child currently is in their understanding. Um, and we have those in computing uh, and a few other subjects. We also have pre-entry checklists where we share with you a checklist of skills and knowledge and understanding that your child should have already to make sure that if they're joining that year group of course, they are going to be able to progress and they're going to be able to handle that level of learning. So that's the part that you can do at home so you can look through the checklist your child can take the the, the pre-test and that combination will help you in the decision making but then the really important part for primary is that you have a conversation uh, with two of our most experienced uh, qualified teachers who are part of the admissions team and they will have a conversation with you about your child and where your child currently is in their learning if you are still not sure by the time you have done the checklist and you've had that conversation, then they sometimes might ask uh, for a little bit more from you. So it might be that you share a little piece of writing or it might be that you video your child reading uh, or something like that. And they will use that to further be able to guide you to the right level for your child. And that works whether you are looking at courses that are above the age related or below the age related. For us, the key thing is to try and support and guide as much as we can to get your child on the right course from the starting point with Woolsey Hall. If you did join a course and it was looking like maybe the course wasn't the right level, which you'll be pleased to know doesn't happen too often, but if you did find yourself in that situation, then there is a period when you first start on that course within which we can switch you to an alternative year group uh, for that particular subject if it's not um, exactly as we had hoped it would be. A secondary route. I would say it, it, I would echo everything that Christine has said there in terms of our we are here to guide and give advice to parents via a range of different methods in secondary we have ready tests um, for our courses which allow students to self-assess with their parents the, their prior knowledge without it being a test as such a knowledge-based test in one part and then actually a quiz to allow them to see where they fall and which which course would best suit them at this point in their learning journey parents have also got access to sample courses um, on the website and it also guides parents for each secondary subject at each level the prior study that we would recommend that a child has completed we do look we do talk to parents as Chris Christine said, you know, part of the process when you when you first inquire this is to talk to a member of our experienced admissions team. And we look at each family and each child individually, taking into account the prior learning they've done outside and making sure that the courses that we are suggesting are the best possible fit for them. Okay, thank you both.
Um, I've got a question now regarding fees. Um, so does the IGCSE fee cover the whole 18 months, two years, or is it an annual fee? So is it basically a one-off fee or do you have to pay for year 10 and year 11 separately? No, it is a one-off fee. It, it's an IGCSE course. So if you enroll upon IGCSE mathematics, that gives you two years access to that course. That's the course term. So you don't pay a fee each year. Okay, thank you. Um, again, sorry, another one for you, Ruth. Um, how do you deal with the oral aspects of modern foreign languages? Okay, um, not a problem at all. So in terms of lower secondary languages, um, for each of our subject, or each of our MFL in lower secondary, French, Spanish and German, there is a mixture of um, skills that are assessed in the assignments. Students have speaking assignments within the courses and therefore those might be a recording they submit to the tutor or a Zoom or a Teams call with their tutor to practice questions. Um, there are also plans afoot to add some additional opportunities into our lower secondary MFL courses so students can engage and practice with each other. At IGCSE, we have a similar, a similar system in terms of the assignments. Students have a number of speaking assignments to complete um, throughout the course, as well as face-to-face -face, um, Skype, Zoom or Teams calls with their tutor to practice the specific examination skills that they need um, for, for their exams. So, for example, they'd study three modules of their French GCSE and then they would have a call with their tutor to practice the topics they've studied in examination style, thus completing a role play and the general conversation that, that would take place in the external exam. OK, thank you very much, Ruth. OK, um, this is an inquiry from it's actually from a primary um, family, but I guess it also is true for secondary as well. How good does my son's English need to be in order to um, take a Woolsey Hall course? Um, so <clears throat> with with that question, um, that there, there are so there are so many factors um, that need to be considered to, to answer that question, really. Um, so from a primary perspective, obviously, it depends on the age of the child as well. Um, the lower down the school you are, uh, the less English language you need to have, because part of the development, if you are in year one, year two, is link English language acquisition. Um, so it really does depend. Um, it is worth saying that obviously all of our courses are English language based courses. And so therefore there is an assumption that there is a certain level of English language that is required so that you can access the courses and so that you can understand things within the course, even down to just simply the instructions. My advice would be that if you are not sure whether your child has the level required, please do fill in an inquiry form and a member of the admissions team will then make contact with you and it will be through those conversations that they're able to specifically look at your particular situation um, and your child's current language level and they will be able to advise you on whether or not they will be able to access or they may find it a little bit difficult um, and within that, it may be that for some courses, they start at a different level to perhaps other courses, depending on language ability um, and particular interest. Ruth, anything to add to that? No, for yeah, I, that's very comprehensive, Christine. I don't think I've got anything additional. Okay, uh, well, one for you and Ruth. Um, how how to find exam centres? How do you go about as a as a private candidate um, finding exam centres, and what support does Wolsey Hall offer for that? So um, at Wolsey Hall, we have two examinations officers. One deals with UK uh, students and entering as private candidates, and the other um, the other's remit falls into the international sector. So you have a direct person to contact when you are looking for 
um, a, an exam centre that accepts private candidates. We also, as an organisation, have partnerships with certain exam centres and private centres around the UK, and we have excellent working relationships with a number of schools who may not advertise the fact that they have private candidates, but have worked with Wolsey Hall previously and are happy to take our students. So our exams officers are able to signpost those centres to you when you enrol with Wolsey Hall. Um, also, just saying this, um, at the admission stage and also when in the first conversations with your SPM, as a family, we know how important it is to make sure you've got that exam centre fixed, you know where you're taking your external exams. So this is something that the admissions team and the SPM will also speak to you about as you go through the process to make sure that everything is ready for when your child is ready to take those exams. Thanks, Ruth. And there was a follow on question regarding um, the practical exams that are required for A level um, sciences um, and how, how you go about finding those. OK, so um, just just to just to clarify, then we offer, as, I, as you saw in the presentation, we offer both a UK and an international science A level uh, curriculum. Um, the only A level science curriculum that has the practicals are the UK qualifications, and those would be taken by students who are residing in the UK and taking their exam there. We again work with centres who provide um, access to the practical facilities and therefore the students can take their practical exam there having first gone through a process of training with that centre. Our courses um, also develop practical skills across all of our science courses starting in primary all the way through. There are practicals that families can complete. Once you get up to A-level, you sometimes need specific equipment like fume cupboards, which makes it a little bit more challenging. But the courses are designed to make sure that every single child has the practical skills needed for that final practical exam. And again, the exams officer can help signpost you to the centre look most closest to you who can support that. Thanks, Ruth. Um, so a question for both of you. Uh, what is Skills for Life? Uh, we obviously have that course in both primary and lower secondary, so maybe you can give a little overview of that one, please. You go first, Christine. OK, so um, so Skills for Life it is, is a wonderful course, actually. Um, and in primary, there is um, two key areas, really. So one is mindfulness. So there are lots of techniques and lots of skills for your child to learn to become more conscious of how their body works, how their emotions are working, how to deal and cater uh, for the different emotions that they have, how to, to know what to do when they're feeling angry about something, have an alternative pathway to stomping their feet and throwing things around, um, and, and how to stay calm in different situations and under pressure. Um, so that part of the course is, is absolutely fantastic. And I, that, that is definitely a life skill that we are all working towards. Some of us still as adults uh, probably haven't quite mastered that yet. But the younger you can start it in terms of developing those skills and being more aware of your emotions, uh, the, the better it is for, for yourself um, and your well-being. And then the other key part of it are those other aspects of socialization, understanding the world, being a global citizen, um, and just um, being able to know how to deal with different situations. So it covers things like being a good friend, um, practical things, it might be money related, thinking about money and budgeting so that you have a sense of um, what it is like to have to manage money. So it, it really is a range of things to help you personally grow and develop um, those skills that one needs to be a great model citizen um, in the world um, and have lots of practical, practical tips and advice on the things that you need to just live day to day. For further details, our website does break it down much more than I have now. Um, and if you go and look at um, a sample um, on primary of a Skills for Life course, you'll get a flavour of what types of things um, you will be doing on that course. But it is lots of fun um, and it really is developing like the, the holistic child rather than 
focusing on a specific subject um, of academics. And I would say the same applies in secondary as well. It's, it is most akin to personal, social and health, PSHE education in schools and the lower secondary skills for life curriculum. Again, it builds upon uh, the idea of developing the emotional intelligence of a child and dealing with different situations in terms of relationships, planning for the future, looking again at kind of practicalities of life and getting, getting the students to put themselves in the position of another person and give advice. And again, developing those higher level skills that, you know, that not necessarily an academic course and academic study does naturally. So it's a really fun course for students to engage in. And also it's got sort of discussion elements that parents can be involved in um, as part of it as well to really focus a child's thinking in different areas. And one thing that we've been very aware of with the Skills for Life in, in lower secondary is to make sure that the scenarios that are being discussed are relevant to students on a global level. So you there's less reference to specific countries, et cetera, within the course that you would naturally find in PSHE lessons within a UK school, for example. Thank you both. Uh, do you get a certificate or report card after completing a level? This, this particular parent was asking about year one, but it could be other, other levels, which would allow them to go on to other, um, you know, back into a traditional schools or, or whatever. Yep, absolutely. So at primary uh, with the younger children, then obviously we want to celebrate um, key milestones for them on our courses. So actually they receive a certificate at the end of part one. So primary courses are split into three parts um, so that you have milestone points in them. And we have a certificate at the end of part one, at the end of part two. And then at the end of the course, you get your course certificate to show that you have completed that year group in that particular subject. Um, for those that need to make a transition back into a physical school at some point, then there are end of year or end of study um, reports that we can provide in primary uh, for those moving back into a physical school and needing to demonstrate or it might just be for an education authority etc that need to demonstrate that you are on courses um, and that you have completed courses and the type of grades that are being um, achieved by your child to demonstrate that they're making progress in learning so absolutely yes we do and the same would apply for secondary. Same in secondary. <laughs> Thank you. OK, um, could you let us know whether you have um, students that are um, studying with Wolsey Hall alongside a traditional school? So they're in full time primary school, for example, in their home country with physical presence, plus doing a few courses from Wolsey Hall in the afternoons and weekends. Is that something that's feasible? Yes, absolutely. Um, and I think that actually goes for primary and for secondary. So we do have a number of students who supplement um, the learning that's taking place in a physical school. So sometimes it might be because a particular passion or interest isn't available at their school. Sometimes it might be that they are struggling to keep up with certain subjects and they're finding it a little bit tricky um, at their school. And so they take those subjects, so it's often English and maths, they take those with Wolsey Hall as well. It might be that they're going to repeat a year that they've already done in a physical school with Wolsey Hall so that they can go through the learning again at their own pace and really make sure that they've understood. Likewise, it might be they have a particular passion and it's all moving too slowly at school. So if they have a particular interest in art, for example, they might be taking, you know, art and French uh, with us um, and accelerating through those courses because they're particularly passionate about those and there's not enough of that um, in the physical school that they are attending. So yes, the, in short, the answer is yes, we do have a number of students doing that and for a multitude of reasons that they choose to supplement that education. Ruth, anything to add? No, just to say, we, we often do see that at GCSE and A-level as well, where a particular in a mainstream school, there's been a clash with option blocks, so they haven't been able to study both of the subjects that they want to do. For example, business or business and uh, psychology were clashing. They might choose to study one of those subjects with us alongside, and it is very feasible, and students say that it works very well. The feedback's been positive. 
Thank you. I am conscious we're running sort of a little over time. I have got a couple more questions here um, that we'll sort of rush through. Uh, I know that the team are working very hard in the Q&A to answer all your questions there as well. But um, this question is about um, subject selection. I think in traditional sort of bricks and mortar schools, there is a, a, a need to follow certain subjects, for example. So this person was asking, um, do you have to do English language and English literature? Um, and do you have to do a modern foreign, foreign language if you're studying with um, Wolsey Hall Oxford, what, what sort of choices do you have? In terms of flexibility of course choice, it, what we would do is we would advise parents as to the rationale behind studying certain subjects. The choice does remain with the parents. Saying that for studying certain subjects at levels such as A level, we do require English language and maths at IGCSE or the equivalent to study at that level. That is due to university requirements and also the levels of those subjects required to access the A-level courses. However, in terms of do they have to do English literature? No, that would be a completely open choice. Do they have to do a foreign language? No. The two key ones in secondary when it comes to IGCSE and IGCSE and A-level, sorry, IGCSE would be English language and maths. But that is not to say that it is, we are insistent that you study those with Wolsey Hall. Your child may be in a mainstream school studying them, and that would be fine. It's just making sure they've got the right qualifications to enable them to continue their education journey as they move on. OK, thank you, Ruth. Uh, this one is also for you, I'm afraid. Um, we've got a lot of secondary ones today. Um, for IGCSE, do you offer specific, and I guess this is for A-level as well, a specific exam pra paper practice um, through past papers, mock exams, etc., or is it done through the course materials? Yes, we do. Uh, we have an exam preparation module for every single course at IGCSE and A-level, which comprises a number of different past papers and guidance on how to complete them. We also have an additional mock service, which parents can choose to take part in for all subjects, one subject, um, one paper. You know, it, it really is flexible. And with the mock exam service, those are then marked by the tutors and specific feedback, targeted feedback on how they have performed and how to improve is given on that mock exam service. Thank you, Ruth. OK, as we are running well over time now, um, I would like to just go to one final question. Um, I think Christina is going to jump on our admissions manager um, and just explain how can I find out more if I still have questions about homeschooling with Wolsey Hall Oxford? Um, thanks, Len, and thanks, everybody. Yeah, so um, thanks, uh, I know we've had lots of questions and we, we've tried to answer these um, as best as we can. But um, the best thing really is if you could submit an inquiry and then arrange to have a dedicated admissions call with somebody from the admissions team to help answer any specific question. Okay, thank you, Christina. Okay, so I'd like to extend a really big thank you to everyone for joining us here today. We really do hope you found that this session was useful and has given you a good understanding of homeschooling with Wolsey Hall Oxford. Um, as Christina has said, if you do have any further questions, we've tried to answer all of the ones as, as much as we can in the Q&A. But if you do have anything else, please do send us in um, an inquiry form and we will be very happy to, to answer these for you. So once again, a very big thank you to everyone and have a great rest of day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.